Welcome back everybody, this is Steve and I've got a Commodore 64 to repair and this is one that you guys have seen on the channel already. This is machine number two and the question I have for you is how long do Commodore 64 repairs last? This one was repaired in October of 2019 and because I have a bunch of these and I enjoy repairing them I didn't really use it much other than to do the repair and get her fixed. So I want to get it fixed again because it's broken again. Let me show you what's going on with it. I got a real quick pro tip for you. I do a lot of different things at this test station. And so I have a cable harness here that's held together by a finder clip. Don't let it kill you. That way I can just reach over and pick up the cables for the Commodore 64 or I can reach over and pick up the cables for live streaming or whatever the case may be and get right after it. So let's plug this thing in real quick. We're gonna need power, which is right there. And we're gonna need video, which is right there. And we can kind of skip the rest. Turn on my power supply. This is machine number two that we repaired previously on the channel. There will be a link up over there somewhere. And it had a bad PLA and it had two bad RAM chips, and we repaired it in October, October of 2019. So it's been a minute, um, and here we go. I turned it on and now it has a black screen, but what was happening before, yeah, there it is. I just turned it off, turned it back on again. What was happening before is that it was not coming on at all. So now we've got two different problems. We've got a black screen and possibly a faulty power switch. Let's get it over to the bench and figure out what happens. All right, we are at the workbench and I have my replacement power switch here. And it's a nice clicky power switch. Okay, so what we need to do is first prove that this works so that I can then show you what it looks like when it doesn't work because I can't show you what it looks like when it does work on a one that doesn't work. So the way that these C64 power switches exist, work, operate, theory of operation, there you go. They they found this switch and it, I guess it was like the cheapest one available at the time or something along those lines. And this happened a lot, I mean, IBM did the same thing. Um, the 25 pin serial port is a good example of what IBM did. Um, only eight of the pins, nine of the pins were used, so they just used an off the shelf 25 pin port and didn't connect most of the ports most of the pins. No big deal. Same thing with this. There is a 5 volt connection and a, a um, 9 volt connection. And then these last two are not connected. At least I think it's 5 and 9. It might be 5 and... No, it's 5 and 9. Um, and then these last two aren't connected at all. So when we show you the motherboard in the future video, you will see in the future of this video, you will see that um, these aren't even soldered in. And that's fine. So right now, I'm going to take this side and this side and you can hear the beep on the meter that shows that there's continuity, there's electricity passing through. So the switch is on. We're gonna turn it off. We're gonna do the same thing. The switch is not beeping, so therefore it's off. And now we try the other side of the switch. That is on. And that is not on. Okay, so this is what a working switch does. Let's get our non-working machine out. This is number two's machine. I removed the SID chip from it um, just because I don't need to do any damaging type stuff while I'm working on that. And then here is the power switch itself. And like I said, these, these two here aren't even connected. So let's take a look at this. And we're gonna be listening for that beep. So a little bit of a connection there. and no connection there at all. Let's change that up. Nothing there, nothing there. So the switch kind of half works. Yeah, now we're back to not working. Not working. So I'm gonna get this switch taken out and then we're gonna put the new switch in and we're gonna see if that solves the problem. I think there's more problems than that though.
All right, the old one is out, and it looks like we might have lost a, a pad, a solder pad off the board. Let's take a look at that. This is one of the, yep, it's gone. This is one of the physical interface connections between the switch and the board to make sure that you're not uh, breaking it off every time you try to operate it. So let's get this new switch put in place. And then there's six pins on here, so we just gotta line up all of the pin holes and put it, put it down where it belongs. And then it'll hold itself in place as we do the soldering. Even with all that work to keep the dirt out of the hole, there was still some dirt left behind. I'm gonna put one in, good. And then I will double check the positioning of it. And then we'll put all the rest of them on. And I'm even going to add those extra two that aren't connected anyway, just for strength. And even though that solder pad is missing from there, hopefully I've got enough heat into the component and the solder to capillary pull the heat away that it was able to connect on top. And there isn't any way to really see that without getting some kind of microscope. So let's get this thing over and take a look and see if it actually starts. We are back over to the test bench. We have the machine plugged in here with our new power switch in it. Let's throw the switch and see what happens. Hey, there you go. So once you fix one thing, something else might break, you never know. And what video on testing Commodore 64s would be complete without a dead test cartridge? The sound of my people. All these bad things here are because I don't have the test harness hooked up. But she's working, that's the important part. All right, so originally this machine had three problems. It had a uh, missing VIC chip, we put one in, that worked. It had a bad PLA, we had to swap out a couple of PLAs to get that to work. And it had some RAM chips that were bad. So missing VIC chip, no signal goes out, nothing on the screen, that's pretty easy to diagnose. Bad PLA is sometimes a black screen. In this machine's case, way back in the original video, it was off colors, and then it was black screen, and then it was off colors again. So we switched that out, we got our, our fantastic, famous Commodore 64 basic prompt, and then uh, bad RAM is the machine just either reports the wrong uh, memory count or doesn't boot or whatever and your diagnostic cartridge does a couple of flashes for you. So we got all that fixed a couple of months ago and then I went to pull it out and it stopped working again because the power switch went bad. And that's kind of what happens with these machines is they're just old and they're well beyond their intended life expectancy to begin with and folks like you and me have just been repairing these things all along and keeping them alive and keeping them running and now we're at the point where i think we have almost a hundred percent of the chips and the boards and so on duplicated into modern alternatives so you can start out from absolute scratch buy a completely brand new machine from parts and put it together. And I've got a video series on my channel about doing that with the 60 clone motherboard. That was a fantastic fun project. But uh, you and I are gonna keep the hope alive on these machines and keep them up and running and keep them, uh, keep them active and keep the hobby going. So I think there is a video right over here that you will enjoy next. Thanks for being awesome. We'll see you in the next one.